Hello guys and welcome to a quick discussion on the revised code of professional conduct. So before we get into the changes, I just want to discuss the principles around this code. So guys, it addresses the fundamental principles that any CASA has to adhere to. So if you have completed your studies, you have completed your articles, you've met the competencies required by SACA, and you are now able to register with SACA as a chartered accountant. If you choose to do so, these are the fundamental principles you have to adhere to. No matter what line of business you choose, whether you stay in auditing, or whether you go and become a financial director or CEO of a business, having your CASA designation as part of your title. Those fundamental principles have been drilled into you through your studies from undergrad into CTA and they do not change. Those fundamental principles are integrity. You need to remain truthful and honest in your dealings. You must disassociate yourself from any information that is misleading. You have to remain objective in your dealings. So if you're a financial director of a business and you're going to get a profit share based on bonus, you cannot make decisions to get the better profit share if it affects the decision that would be best for the business. You must remain free from bias. As is the saying, if you are a partner at an audit firm, and you want to keep the client, but you know that you need to give an opinion that shows there are misstatements, you need to be objective and say, unfortunately, I have to give you that opinion, even though I want to remain as the partner on this client. Okay, so remaining free from bias is crucial. We have to act with professional competence. and you care, meaning we need to make sure we have the necessary knowledge and skills to do whatever function it is we are doing. And keep and maintain that knowledge and skills. We need to act with professional behavior. And again, this has been drummed into you through your studies, through your training contracts. In becoming a CASA, we've got a certain level of professionalism required through all of those. And as a result, we need to maintain them to keep the profession prestigious. And finally, confidentiality. Where we are exposed to confidential information, we need to keep that information confidential. And this, guys, as auditors, we will often be exposed to confidential information and in any other role that a CA takes. So as a financial director, you will be exposed to confidential information at your director's meetings and so on. That needs to maintain its confidentiality. Okay, so we have to adhere to these no matter what our roles are. But like I keep showing you, there are different roles we can take on as CASAs. And so the CPC then goes one step further and splits those roles for us. So they say, you can be a CASA in business, so that means you could be the financial director of a company, or you can be a CASA in public practice, and this means we are the auditors. So, we are going to be faced with different situations based on the different roles we perform. And the CPC goes and says, if you are in business, you could be faced with these situations that could affect compliance with the fundamental principles. And if you are in public practice, you could be faced with these situations which could affect compliance with the fundamental principles. And so it will give us some examples so that if we are in one of those situations, we've got a way to determine if our fundamental principles are going to be compromised or 
to ensure that they are not compromised. Okay, so in terms of the new revised CPC, guys, it's all just been a change in structure. You can see those fundamental principles are the same. So in our previous version, we had three parts and it dealt with sections that were applicable to all, sections that were applicable to outside public practice, and then inside public practice. All that's happened is it has now been split into four parts and they've changed the structure of it. So, part one is applicable to all CA essays, same as part A in the previous version. This includes the fundamental principles, this includes the theory about the threats, this includes the theory about your safeguards, and it includes the conceptual framework. How you need to go about working through a situation, picking up the threats to the fundamental principles, considering its significance, and then applying the safeguards. Part two now deals with chartered accountants in business. So where part C in the previous version used to deal with outside public practice, part two now deals with in business, meaning the same thing. We are not in public practice, we are in business. Part three then deals with in public practice, and in the previous version this was part B, in public practice. So some situations that I could face being the auditors of a client. And then, in part B of the previous version, they included independence as a section. And now, independence has been split out into part 4A and 4B. Okay, so both of these you can say here deal with independence. And so once again, it deals with somebody in public practice, so your auditors, essentially, but part 4A is if your auditors are performing an audit or a review engagement, whereas part 4B is if they're performing any other type of assurance that is not audit or a review engagement. So you guys are more likely to be given a situation of part 4A because you are being tested on auditing. And so ultimately, you should be the auditors of a client and therefore exposed to the situations in part 4A, as opposed to you being auditors, but now you're actually performing other assurance engagements for a client, in which case part 4B would be applicable. But either way, when you start working through 4A or 4B, you will see that they'll discuss threats, but they will not say to what. That's because it is to independence only. If they start to mention other fundamental principles, that is in addition to independence. Okay, so it's literally a structural change. You will find that the same situations are applicable to ACA in business as they were in part C of the previous version, in the same situations to CAs in public practice as they were in part B in the previous version. Important to go and make sure that you highlight and flag this so that in a test you can go and find it. Guys, remember, it is quite hard to make sure that you know every single situation and then all the threats to those situations and potential safeguards. So, Go and familiarize yourself with the contents of what is covered in part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4A and part 4B. And then in a situation, in a question, when you can see, oh, there's a CA in business here, and then you can open up part 2 and see if there's been any situations that have been highlighted as 
situations ACA in business could face. And then you can apply what the CPC says for that situation. Or if you see you are the auditors, you now know part 3, part 4A are now applicable. Are there any situations in part 3 or part 4A that have been applicable to this scenario? I can go to that section, I can go and see, here's the threats to the fundamental principles or to independence, here's the significance and here's the safeguards. Okay, that conceptual framework, guys, is so important. You need to answer all your questions. First, looking at, one, what are the threats? Two, the fundamental principles and also if you are the auditors or in public practice doing an assurance engagement, independence. Two, discuss the significance. And once again, in the section, they will give you factors to consider to determine if it is significant. And three, provide the safeguards to reduce that threat so that it is at an acceptable level. And once again, those safeguards in the specific section. Super, guys.